And in this example, we're going to show you how to find the separation distance between the sodium and the chlorine ions in a sodium chloride structure. And assuming that we're bombarding it with x-rays at 0.22 nanometers, which is 220 picometers, and let's say that constructive interference is seen by the detector when the angle between the horizontal and the incoming beam is 23 degrees. What is separation distance in that crystal? So let's give that a try. Well, first of all, we have to realize that the second X-ray will travel the extra distance equal to this distance plus, that, plus this distance right here. And that distance here is the separation distance of the crystals D times the sine of the angle theta. Notice that uh, this is like a right triangle. This is separation distance between the first layer and the second layer in the crystal structure. This is the opposite side to the angle, so therefore it's the hypotenuse D times the sine of the angle since it's the opposite side. And also notice that this angle theta here is the same as this angle theta there. Notice that if this angle becomes smaller, this will turn this way and this angle becomes smaller as well. You can see it's the same angle, theta. So the extra distance traveled by the second X-ray beam is 2 times D sine theta. And since constructive interference was seen when the angle is 23 degrees, constructive interference means that the phase shift was a full wavelength. So that means that the extra distance, in this case, extra distance was also equal to one full wavelength. So we set those two equal to each other. So we have 2D sine theta is equal to one full wavelength of the X-rays beaming in onto the crystal. And we're trying to find the separation distance D which means that d is equal to the wavelength divided by 2 times the sine of the angle theta. The wavelength we're using is 220 picometers, so it's 220 times 10 to the minus 12 meters divided by 2 times the sine of 23 degrees. And that should give us the separation distance between the sodium and the chlorine ions. Let's find out. So 220. Uh, picometers divided by 2 divided by the sine of 23 degrees and we get 281.5 uh, let's round it off to 281 or 282 282 picometers would be the separation distance uh, for the ions uh, between the sodium and the chlorine ions so um, let's see now if we then look at the cell structure the unit cell structure for sodium chloride Notice it kind of looks like this. We have a, a chlorine ion, a sodium ion, a chlorine ion, sodium, chlorine, chlorine, oh, the other way around, chlorine, sodium, sodium. So this is sodium, chlorine, and chlorine like that. And so we're looking at this distance right here. This D is the distance that we just found. Notice that the unit cell structure is such that the distance from the center of one chlorine ion to the center of this next chlorine ion is A, which is equal to two times the separation distance we just found. If we double that number, we get 564, which is indeed the size of the side of a unit cell of a sodium chlorine uh, crystal structure. So you can see how that gives you a lot of insight. If you do an experiment like this and you come up with that information, you double it, that gives you the unit cell structure, and then if you compare that to the average ion size, you will find out that that was pretty close to the average ion size of sodium and chlorine. So, very good. That, um, that is how we use that technique, and we use that technique to find out just about every single crystalline structure that we've examined so far, because there's almost no technique better than that to do so.